OK, well, I'll be able to improvise in about 10 years when I've gone through all 600 scales in all keys. Because that's where it would normally come from, isn't it? You, generally, you do your associated board or whatever, you do your grade three or whatever, and then you straight away you're learning scales. And we just get stuck into that idea that we've got to learn all those before we improvise. Now, I don't agree with that at all. Um, so I'm going to kind of show you a model that I think you'll find interesting. And it, th at the heart of it, it means that we're not going to start learning all of these seven note scales. Because there's, there's something very logical that comes from it. The more notes you've got in a scale, the less places it's going to fit in terms of a chord. Is that right? Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. So that means that we reduce the amount of numbers of that scale, then it's going to be more universal. You'll be able to move it around and play it as different chord shapes or in, against different chords. So we're going to look at today, and have a blow in a minute, with these five note shapes. Now, does that mean anything to anybody? Anybody know what a five note shape might be called? Pentatonic, pentatonic scale, okay. Now, I'd like to sync the whole idea that it's a pentatonic scale now. Now that we know what it is, let's forget it, because there's a whole way of learning based around pentatonic scales, and, and it's a particular thing in itself, and then people think that's what we're going to do now. Well, it's not. Because I don't need to think of them as pentatonic scales. I want you to think of them as chords. Make sense? I want you to think of them the way Steve would. I also want you to understand that what he, the information that I'm giving him, or you as a pianist, will work either if you're playing them all together, or whether you're playing them as a scale. It's the same thing. Okay? Why don't you shout out a few chords, types, and we'll try and make this, um, we'll make some sense of it, and, and hopefully get you to see quickly how, how useful this might be, might be, because what I'll tell you is this. Probably you'll shout me one of ten chord types that we know, and that we can pick the real book or the fake book and look through and say, how many types of chords have we got there? And there might be about ten. Well, the root of this five note shape idea is that if we learn three of those five note shapes and they're only differ di differing from each other by one note and, when, and then we learn those in the 12 keys that's 36 five note shapes you can create any chord and therefore if you like any scale and be able to play harmony with that now to me once I realised that, I thought, this is a much better starting point than having to learn two or three hundred scales. You'll also see, I hope, that by understanding why they fit, when we go on to play six notes or seven note scales, you'll see where they're all derived from. So it's a great way of understanding the harmony from inside. And, and before long, you'll suddenly realise that you do know about harmony. It's not something that the guitarist or the piano player knows about. You, don't want to know about that really, it's a bit too awkward. So anybody want to give us a few uh, chord shapes that we can start to work on? Major. Major, okay. So a good symbol for that we use is, is usually a triangle. Everybody all right with that? We call that major, because that's, it's an American thing, but we'll go with it. It's not a bad one, is it? Anything else? Minor. Minor, okay, and we, we'll use a minor sign for that. Augmented, oh, right, okay. Nice. Right, we'll put that, um, that can either, I'm going to create three rows, that could, that could maybe go, uh, that could maybe go there. Okay? And you get half diminished. Half diminished, okay. Everybody alright with that symbol? Diminished, is, diminished has always been, even from classical music, a little circle. So half diminished, just put a line through it. Anybody know another name for that, that's really common, and that you'll see as many times? So we'll just put in brackets, that's a minus seven, flat five. All right. A couple more. Oh, we got the dominant. Dominant. Let's stick that here. Steve. <laughs> a minor major seven? Is, that, is it getting outside? Well, no, we can, we can go with that. That was quite a, did you, did you hear that one? A minor major seven. That's a good one, yeah. 
All right, that, 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 that's pretty good for the time being. Anyway, here's our pentatonic. So, how can we relate that to a major chord? If we now forget that as a scale and think of that as a chord, okay? Think of that as a chord? Yeah. yeah. What chord would that be? Can you play that as a chord, please? Stay Anybody idea what, what that chord is called? If we wanted to represent that with numbers and a symbol, what would it be called? Major 6 9. Everybody with that? So we can say that's a C major 6 9. What's a fifth below C then? Any ideas? A fifth below C. F. Right. So Steve, could you um, could you play that those notes now, but with an F bass? Jared, could you play an F? So what notes is he playing in terms of writing another major chord here? In other words, we've got the same stuff at the top, but we've re -re we changed the root, and we've now got a completely different chord. What is it exactly? Yeah, so you've got F, uh, you, there's no C, there's no F, we've got A, C, E, what would the E be? Major 7. Major 7. We've got a D. Not against F. Oh, sorry, 13. 30, yeah, we'll call it 13 because it's got the ninth as well. So that's an F major 13. Okay? Everybody alright with that? No, we're talking really simple. We're giving, just, just we're giving the notes of the scales, numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we're giving the name of the chord, same notes, 1, 9, which is the same as 2, 3, 4 or 11, 5, 6 or 13, 7. Okay? So that's all I'm really asking you. What, what, what numbers are these? And then we can build the chord around it. So let's go back one more time now to a B flat. Can you play? Uh, can you play a C pentatonic with a B flat in the bass? So what's that? Any ideas? Julius? It's got the, the raise eleven. It's got the raise eleven. So we've got. C is the ninth. It's the second note of the scale, isn't it? Of a B flat scale, C would be the second. Yeah? But when we're thinking about this chord, we're going to call it nine. The D would be the third. The E would be a sharpened fourth, because in B flat major we'd have an E flat. So that's an E natural. So it's a sharp four or a sharp eleven. Do you agree? G is again the sixth or the thirteenth, and A is the seventh. So really, we'd write that like this. B flat major sharp 11. Has anybody never seen that chord before? I can guarantee you'll have heard it.